Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it's time for some Part of Exile discussion. Patch 3.18 Spoiler Season is here and includes a Major Blood Divination card amongst a bunch of other information. Today, GGD revealed all of the Divination cards that are being added to the game in 3.18. An important caveat, this is just the things being added, it doesn't include changed Divination cards. And I know that they're changing my Divination card, the Price of Protection. I know they're changing the Divination card, the Hook and we will see what exactly happens there. That's all the divination cards that got broken by patch 3.17. Every divination card that grants a specific tile set of map was broken by that patch, and so we'll see what happens as far as those go, but I expect they'll be in 3.18. So firstly, we have Altered Perception. This is a divination card that grants a simulacrum, and there's also a very similar card just under it, which is a Fate Worse Than Death, which is a card that grants a Cortex. These divination cards that grant access keys to specific capstone content are particularly scarce in general. That's been my experience with them, and I would expect that these cards will be no different. These are not going to be things you can acquire yourself in Solo Selfbound very often, although I'm open to being proven wrong on that. And they did have the divination card for a synthesis map, which was made quite common in patch 3.17. So maybe they've changed their mind on that, but most of the previous ones the divination cards for pure breach stones, the divination cards for, for uber elder fragments and things like that are things that you don't generally self-compile a set of. So we'll see how rare they end up being, but these will definitely be a significant factor in day one on a trade league. Day one on a trade league, these divination cards are going to be dropping for people who open stack decks. A lot of stack decks get open day one, and there'll be some of these cards coming out of them. These will then end up being some of the first simulacrums and cortexes that exist in a league. So that's just the way that stack decks work at the moment. I kind of hope they rework that at some point, make it so that some of these cards are time-gated. You know, they can't be pulled out of a stack deck for a couple of days, but that's getting into opinion, not news, and this is a news video. Next up is the Brawny Battle Mage. This card grants a Merciless Tornado Wand, which is a starting point for crafting a physical damage Tornado Wand. Now, keep in mind that physical damage wands can actually be used for multiple things. They can be used to attack enemies on a wand-based character, but they can also be used if your goal is to make a... Uh, but they can also be used by Spellslinger builds, because Spellslinger builds will add the total base damage of the wand to the spells that they're casting. And if the spell that they're using deals physical damage, then it can be very useful to have a Merciless prefix and a Flaring prefix if you can get both of them together. That is easier said than done. This is a powerful starting point for crafting, and there's a number of other divination cards that grant merciless weapons of specific types. This will join in with all of those and be probably of the same rarity as things like the Merciless Armaments divination card. Next up is Darker Half. This is a set of three for five Eldritch Chaos Orbs. This is going to be a really interesting card. If you can get your hands on it early, Eldritch Chaos Orbs are something that are very powerful for early crafting. Although having only five of them may not be enough to do anything really significant, but you can definitely improve an early piece of gear that you get that might have, say, an incursion mod on it. So this divination card will be really good because Eldritch Chaos Orbs are really good early in the league. That said, we're going to have to figure out where it drops. Who knows? Could drop from a boss or it could drop from a tile set drop. Uh, most divination cards that grant currencies tend to be from tile set drops, but there are a few exceptions. And one that comes to mind is the divination card, the Long Con, which is a divination card for an Elder Slayer's Exalted Orb that was added a while ago. This card is very, very rare and appears to drop in only in the chests at the end of Eternal Labyrinth and the Enriched Eternal Labyrinths. So maybe it'll drop from something like that, but we're just going to have to find that out through play. Next is the Forward Gaze, a divination card for a replica unique. These are the high specific unique items. There are so, so, so many of them, and I'm really happy to see a divination card for them. And it was really good for the game that we had the Dying Anguish divination card last league in a very good map, and that meant that some of the heist exclusive stuff was available from other locations within Path of Exile. The Forward Gaze grants options. If you like heist, then the best way to get your replica uniques is going to be through running Grand Heist and getting them that way. But if you don't like heist, then the Forward Gaze grants an alternative source of these items. This almost certainly respects the relative rarity of these items, but it's worth pointing out that with the replica uniques, there's a number of quite common ones, and I'm thinking here mostly of replica conqueror's efficiency, which seems to be in the bottom rarity tier, seems to be in the most common that you can get among them. There's a number of really common ones that are really popular and really, really good items. 
So for that reason, I think the forward gaze is going to be a great addition to the game. I really hope that this drops in, as a tile set drop in a fairly popular map. Like I would love to see this dropping in Mesa or City Square. I think that would be a really, really positive thing. Next is from Bone to Ashes. This grants a double corrupted Namahu's Flame. Now here, we're gonna have to quickly mention opportunity cost. There is a reason people don't double corrupt Namahu's Flame very much. And that's because the double corruption altar is a precious resource and you generally speaking want to use it on the things that give the very, 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 very best possible results. So things like Call of the Brotherhood are very popular choices for double corruption. However, Namahu's Flame is something that is a unique item that's often used, uh, including at Endgame. It ha it's always had a build or two around it, and also it's something that can benefit a lot from getting the right Vile mods on it. For that reason, I'm really happy to see a Divination card for Namahu's Flame double corrupted, and this card could well be pretty self-farmable. Some of the past ones, there's a Fiddleitis' Spike Divination card that's too implicit corrupted that's actually pretty self-farmable. There's a Facebreaker one that doesn't seem to be self-farmable, although I could be wrong. Maybe it's just that I hate the dungeon tile set so much that I haven't run that, uh, that enough to see that the Unchained Divination card might be more common than I think it is. Lastly, with a name like From Bone to Ashes, it, it feels like it's going to be a tile set drop in zones like Crematorium. So we'll have to see. I'm just speculating there based on the name, but that really seems like it's where you would expect it to drop. So Further Invention is the next card, and this also is in that same category of opportunity cost. Further Invention grants an item that you, to make yourself would require an Awaken Absorb, but that is never going to justify the use of an Awaken Absorb, because Awaken Absorb have more powerful use cases. There's a number of other Divination cards that grant double influenced items as well, and most of them see some use as crafting bases and particularly as something that people will uh, source early in a league in order to then apply all sorts of harvest reforge crafts to. I think people will have a lot of fun with this. Thematically this really looks like it's linked to the Black Star. The artwork just absolutely captures the feel of the Black Star's arena. Even though it's green and red rather than blue and red, it definitely just feels like the Black Star and so I'm going to speculate, uh, without any proof, I'm going to speculate that it's going to drop from the Black Star and if it does drop from the Black Star, it doesn't need to be a very rare Divination card. It could be something that drops one in five runs, and there'll be a fair number of them going around in a trade league economy, but they won't be staggeringly rare. Of course, I'm just guessing there based on the artwork, I could be very, very wrong. The next Divination card is probably going to be a lot of players' favourite in this list, and that is Home. So what is an exceptional gem, you're asking? An exceptional gem is Enlighten, Empower, or Enhance at the time that I'm recording this video. There may be new ones added in the future, but this is going to give you one of those three cards with equal rarity. It's going to have a random quality, anywhere from 1 to 20, but that's not the reason you care about it. You care about it because it's an Enlighten, an Empower, or an Enhance. All of these are very, 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 very rare, and they're somewhat chase items now. That's a change that happened a couple of leagues ago, but they're all somewhat chase, and they're definitely something people want to get their hands on. This is simply going to put more of them into the trade league, but also I think this is going to be loved by solo self-found players, assuming that people are able to, uh, to target farm this in any way. I think you'll see a lot of target farming of this early, not necessarily from more casual solo self-found players, but from people that play leagues enough to finish leveling and enlighten, to finish leveling and empower. They will probably target farm wherever home drops very early in the league. Next up is Rebirth and Renewal, a divination card for a winged scarab. Scarab Divination cards have generally been very, very rare. And so we're going to have to see how rare this one is, but all of the other ones, like More Is Never Enough, are much rarer than you would expect based upon how common Scarabs are now. A lot of their drop rates seem to have been set based upon how rare Scarabs were in 3.5. Even well before 3.17, Scarabs were getting much, much, much more common than that. So I have to see how Rebirth and Renewal feels in practice. I do feel that this might be something that people just uh, trade for because they don't feel like they can compile a set of themselves, but we'll see what happens. Uh, next is the one everyone cares about the most, the Apothecary, at least if you're a trade league player. Mageblood is one of the most expensive unique that can drop anywhere in the game, and generally speaking, it's the most expensive unique, excluding ones that only a few people want. So Stasis Prison is often the most expensive unique in a league, but it's not very widely wanted, whereas Mageblood is pretty universally wanted, pretty universally good on characters, and is, yeah, arguably the strongest belt in the game for anyone that's fighting bosses in Path of Exile. 
This is a set of five and we don't know anything really more than that about where it's gonna drop. However, one thing that I would say about this divination card is that it is probably going to be 160% the rarity of the divination card, the Doctor. The Doctor is already a pretty rare card, a very rare card, but it's not actually one of the rarest cards in the game. The reason I say that is that Mage Blood and Headhunter have appear to have the same rarity as monster drops in the game. Mage Blood, Headhunter, Reef Bane, the that's the mean fishing rod, and the Squire are all all belong to a class that the, the community calls Tier Zero Uniques, and these appear to be the same rarity as each other. Usually, when there's two items that have the same rarity as each other, and there's a divination card added, the relative rarity of those cards is relative to the set size. And so for that reason, I expect that you would see five Apothecary drops for every eight Doctor drops on average if they were to drop from the same content. Now, they definitely won't drop from the same content, but where the Apothecary drops is just going to be something we're going to have to discover over time. Where it will definitely drop, though, a lot is from stack decks and from other Divination card rewards. This is going to be the big jackpot that people are looking for when they're opening stack decks. House of Mirrors will probably be worth more, but the Apothecary will be the one that you will actually have a chance of getting. Again, in speculation, I'm going to make a separate video where I go through the maths of how I believe stack decks work as, as of 3.17 and what that's going to imply for the supply of Mage Blood cards. However, it is my initial thought that this Divination card is going to roughly double and a half the supply of Mage Bloods in the league. So it's going to be a big deal. Additionally, it's just going to be nice to have a massive jackpot drop. Wherever, wherever it comes from, it's going to be fantastic to see something that is going to make the league of a lot of people that get it as a, as a lucky drop, you know, just as a complete fluke drop. Maybe they decide to put it in cells, you know, just to be nasty. And then if that's the case, someone's going to be running cells on their first character of the league and they're going to get an apothecary drop and it's going to really, really set them up for the entire league. The next divination card is the Destination. This is a two implicit corrupted Watcher's Eye. Now, it's worth noting that this divination card doesn't specify whether it's two aura mods or three aura mods. It also doesn't specify item level. Now, item level, the way that, that works on divination cards, it is your character. It is their level capped at 80. So if you turn this in on a level 62 character, you'd get a le an item level 62 Watcher's Eye. If you turn it in on a level 91, you would get an item level 80 Watcher's Eye. Now, in terms of Watcher's Eyes that drop from monsters, they will either be item level 85 or 86. Item level 85 ones have dropped from the Elder Encounter. Item level 86 ones have dropped from the Uber Elder Encounter. And so they have two and three Aura Mods, respectively. This card doesn't specify either way. I would expect, in the absence of any clarification, that this will be a two-mod Watcher's Eye that will drop from this card and that the item level will be a Red Herring. However, we're going to find that out for sure or the first time someone turns one of this card in. Expect this divination card to be extremely, extremely rare. There are a few other divination cards that grant two implicit corrupted chase uniques, and one that comes to mind is the divination card for the savior. That divination card is one of the oldest divination cards that the Path of Exile community has not been able to work out the drop location of. So that should give you a bit of a sense as to just how rare these cards can be. And I'm expecting the destination will be somewhat similar. Lastly, we have the Dungeon Master. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of fun. This is going to give you a unique belt, which is going to be double influenced. There's a couple of other cards that are vaguely along these lines, but most of the time this is going to give you a very, very shiny looking Worms Mold. Sometimes you're going to get a bit luckier and you're going to get something like an Auxium or a Pyroshock Clasp. And then sometimes, once or twice a league, someone's going to get the Miracle Mage Blood or Headhunter from it. This is going to be a lot of fun to turn in, but these divination cards that grant double influenced uniques do tend to be quite rare. So we're just gonna have to find out where that drops and how rare it is. I'd expect this divination card to be somewhat comparable in rarity to the divination card Abandoned Wealth, which is the set of five cards that grants three Exalted Orbs. And if you've ever found that, you know, it's not something that you see very often. You know, you can go an entire play session if you're unlucky and get none of them. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Dungeon Master is similar or if the Dungeon Master drops from fairly difficult content. That said, with a name like the Dungeon Master, it may just drop from dungeon-themed tile sets. We'll have to see on that. That's all I've got on these Divination cards. May Evolves have interesting results, and I will put out something else further on how stack decks work, as best as I can tell it, and what I think is going to be the impact on Mage Blood.